depths of circulation which are being running in the abdominal cavity that's the portal circulation and the cable circulation now these two separate uh, sets of circulation they do exist but they are united at the level of the uh, diaphragmatic hiatus of the inferior vena cava and from here the whole of the blood is uh, actually being uh, whether it is uh, directly drained into the inferior vena cava or it is circulated through the portal um, uh, circulation it has ultimately drained into the inferior vena cava which uh, returned the blood from the abdomen into the right atrium of the heart and now inferior vena cava what is inferior vena cava inferior vena cava is a large vessel which is uh, it's a large bore uh, vein and this vein is actually responsible for draining all the blood from the uh, whole of the body below the level of the diaphragm okay diaphragm se niche jitne bhi organs hote hain whether it's uh, limbs that is the uh, lower limbs whether it's uh, pelvic cavity perineal uh, region or abdominal cavity the whole of the blood it needs to be drained into the inferior vena cava now inferior vena cava it is formed by the confluence of the common iliac veins okay there are right and left common iliac veins which are joined together at the level of the fifth lumbar vertebra and it extends is to it goes straight upward it ascends straight upward and it terminates at the right atrium of the heart now this is a retroperitoneal structure it's a deep down structure and it has got a direct contact with the with the lumbar and the thoracic vertebrae respectively and it is uh, it's a retroperitoneal structure since it's retroperitoneal so it has got only its anterior surface which is being covered by the peritoneum while the posterior surface is devoid of the peritoneum it lies between the liver and the diaphragm and when it goes uh, uh, cranially it uh, it lies on the medial aspect it lies on more medial aspect and it uh, uh, ascends upward and enters into the right atrium of the heart and how does it enters into the thoracic cavity by uh, from the abdominal cavity that is by a tendinous opening which is located within the central tendon of the diaphragm at the level of the eighth thoracic vertebrae so here from here it ascends upward it basically originates at the level of the fifth lumbar vertebra and then it ascends upward at the level of the g8 it goes into the uh, in, uh, it enters into the thoracic uh, cavity and uh, it ascends upward further to enter into the um, right atrium of the heart uh, it is receiving all the veins of uh, venous blood from the uh, from all parts of the body uh, low to level of the diaphragm now moving on further when we look at the tributaries of the inferior vena cava now i want all of you to please have a quick, uh, uh, look at the picture which is being shown over here so basically there are uh, uh, the veins are divided into four different categories four different categories may starting from uh, downward to upward we are ascending uh, from downward to upward since it's a vein तो हम इसको इसी तरीके से लेके चलेंगे दैट देर आर आई वॉन्ट ऑल ऑफ यू टू प्लीज लुक एट दी एट दूविंग सो दे आर फर्स्ट टू ट्रिब्यूटरीज आर एक्चुअली इट्स वेन्स ऑफ ओरिजिन एंड दीज वेन्स ऑफ ओरिजिन आर दी राइट एंड लेफ्ट कॉमन वेन्स ओके सो वेन वी लुक एट दैट पिक्चर वी आर एबल टू सी द राइट कॉमन आई एस एंड द लेफ्ट कॉमन आई एस एंड इन द सेंटर वी आर एबल टू सी द मीडियम सेक्ट्रल वेन नो द राइट एंड लेफ्ट आई एस वेन्स आर बेसिकली डिड कॉमन आई एस वेन्स आर डिवाइडेड इन टू द इंटरनल एंड एक्सटर्नल आई एस वेन्स एंड दीज इंटरनल एंड एक्सटर्नल आई एस वेन्स आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर ड्रेनिंग द the uh, genital structures of the male and female um, uh, human body as well as uh, the uh, lower extremities uh, so in this way the blood which is draining from the lower extremities and from the genitalia of the males and females it is drained through this uh, common uh, through these uh, common iliac uh, uh, veins and it ultimately pours it into the inferior vena cava then when we ascend upward we are able to see Uh, there are uh, five uh, uh, lateral abdominal wall tributaries okay 
and uh, these tributaries include the four lumbar vein and one inferior phrenic vein. Okay. So if you look on the side walls, there are out branchings which are being shown over here that is being labeled as the first lumbar, second lumbar, third lumbar, and the fourth lumbar. Now these lumbar veins are responsible for the uh, venous vein, uh, drainage from the abdominal wall. So abdominal wall बनती है उससे ये venous drainage लेती हैं the the uh, venous blood is actually being poured into into these uh, lumbar veins. at the level of the lumbar vertebra so these side walls of the abdominal uh, cavity are being drained into the lumbar veins that's the first second third and fourth lumbar veins and they are being poured in the, the venous blood is being poured in into the inferior vena cava again another vein which is responsible for draining the blood is the inferior phrenic vein and that inferior phrenic vein is associated with the drainage of the Blood from the the venous blood from the diaphragm and its associated structures. Okay, so that blood is also being poured in into the inferior vena cava. So we have got uh, if you if you look over here, we have got the two veins of origin. That's the right and left column, common IV vein along with the centrally running vein, which is called as the median sacral vein. Then we have got five lateral abdominal wall tributaries, which are Uh, among the and then the abdominal is adjacent structures. So in this way, the uh, the abdominal wall uh, is being uh, uh, giving its blood, uh, venous blood, into the inferior vena cava. Okay, moving on further, there are three lateral visceral tributaries. Okay, now there these three lateral visceral tributaries. Visera ka matlab hai ke the Uh, blood is being drained from the visceras, and what are these visceral tributaries? Uh, these visceral tributaries are the uh, right gonadal and uh, the right and left gonadal, right and left renal, and right and left suprarenal. So basically, from the gonads, that is the testicular veins in case of males, and the ovarian veins in case of females. Gonads का मतलब यही होता है that these are the um uh, sex cells producing uh, uh, organs okay and uh, they are testes in case of males and ovaries in case of females so the the gonadal veins on either side they are going to be entered into the into the inferior vena cava then we have got the blood draining from both of the kidneys on the right as well as on the left side this is also getting into the uh, inferior vena cava and above the kidney we have got a small glands which are associated with it which are called as the suprarenal glands so both of these glands on the uh, on either sides they are also ultimately draining into the um into the inferior vena cava so we have got three lateral visceral tributaries they are the right and left gonadal veins the renal veins and the suprarenal veins which are located on either side okay so in this way we have done the three veins which are um, the first jo humne dekha tributary usme the veins of uh, the origin which includes the common iliac vein and the median sacral vein i am again going to repeat it that's the common iliac and the median sacral vein when we ascend upward we have seen that there are five lateral abdominal wall tributaries and they are the inferior phrenic vein and the veins which are coming from the first second third and lumbar fourth lumbar uh, veins they are also getting into it then we have seen the three uh, lateral visceral uh, tributaries and they are draining the blood from the gonads uh, that is testes in case of males and ovaries in females then kidneys on either side and suprarenal glands on either side they are getting in, they are giving the uh, the venous blood into the inferior vena cava 
Now moving on further, these were the lateral tributaries. There are three anterior visceral tributaries as well. And these three anterior visceral tributaries are basically the hepatic veins. So if we ascend upward at the topmost level, at the level of the eighth thoracic vertebra, we are able to see the three hepatic veins which are shown in the picture. And they are getting into the, they are giving all the blood from the uh, from the uh, liver, it gets entered into the uh, inferior vena cava. So we know that the portal circulation, it ultimately enters into the liver and within the hepatic sinusoids, uh, the, the hepatic venules, capillaries, and then the venules and then hepatic vein, they take up the blood and then this blood is being poured in into the uh, it is being poured in into the uh, inferior vena cava. So in this way, we have seen that all the blood from the uh, 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 from the different parts of the abdominal cavity, from the abdominal wall, from different viscera, from the lower extremities, and from the portal circulation by means of the hepatic veins, it has ultimately entered into the inferior vena cava. Now that inferior vena cava is giving this blood into the right atrium of the heart. Is it clear till now to all of you? I want your uh, uh, reply in the chat box. Is it clear to all of you? Okay. So this is the inferior vena cava. Okay, thank you. Thank you so very much. So this is the inferior vena cava beginning from the level of the fifth lumbar vertebra by the fusion of the common eyelid veins and it ascends upward, receiving different tributaries from different parts of the abdominal wall and uh, the different viscera, ascending upward, entering into the uh, thoracic uh, cavity by passing through a tendinous opening in the uh, at the level of the eighth thoracic vertebra, and then it ascends upward further, and it enters into the right atrium of the heart, bringing ultimately all the venous blood over there. Now, when we look uh, uh, further, uh, there is a, again a separate set of circulation which is called as the portal circulation. Now, this uh, 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 specific set of circulation is basically composed of, of the veins which are responsible for draining all the abdominal cavities this drop. Um, the, the, you know, Sarajo uh, stomach had the whole of the the small intestine, the large intestine, the pancreas, gallbladder, and the liver itself, it ultimately, uh, the, blood, the venous blood, it is being poured in into the uh, portal circulation. And uh, about 80% of the uh, hepatic inflow, it comes from the um, uh, portal vein. So, 80% of uh, uh, circulation may jo inferior vena cava ki circulation may blood aata hai and uh, which is being given off from the uh, liver that is the hepatic inflow that is about 80% of the blood is being given off from the portal vein. So when we look at the portal vein, what is portal vein? Portal vein again it's a large bore vessel which is about 7 to 8 centimeters in length. And this important vein is formed uh, just behind the um, head and uh, at the level of the neck of the pancreas by the fusion of uh, two important veins. One is called as the splenic vein and the other one is called as the, uh, the uh, superior mesenteric vein. And this uh, uh, formation, it takes place at the level of the second lumbar vertebra. So I want all of you to please have a look at the picture which is shown over uh, above and uh, there is a vein which is coming from the hilum of the spleen and that uh, vein is traversing the whole uh, parenchyma of the pancreas and uh, that vein is called as the splenic vein. While uh, there is a vein which is coming from the, uh, <coughs> from, uh, the lower uh, border of the pancreas and that is being labeled as the inferior mesenteric vein and it enters into the uh, on the posterior aspect of the pancreas uh, at the level of the neck of the pancreas. Okay, here there is a confluence of both of these veins. They take place um, on the posterior surface, and uh, then there is a formation of a large bored vessel, which is called as the portal vein. Now, this portal vein it enters into the uh, into deep down inside the uh, liver. 
Now this uh, uh, portal vein is carrying the, the visceral blood to the liver. Uh, now this portal vein, it do not carry any of the blood from the abdominal walls. Rather, it is just carrying the visceral blood. And uh, it, as soon as it enters inside the uh, liver, it undergoes a ramification within the parenchyma of the liver. Now this uh, uh, ramification by the word ramification, we means there are multiple branches which are being given off from the portal vein. Ramification ka pattern jo hota usko basically hum bilkul is tarikhe se lete hain that jaise darakht mein aapne dekha hoga that if there is a big tree, to us tree ke andar jo uh, there are big branches then smaller branches and then very smaller branches Similarly, the, the word ramification is used for that specific pattern, as a bade darak mein se uski branches nikalti hain, aur phir majeed branches choti, aur phir usse choti is taan nikalti jati hain. Similar is the case with that portal vein. It undergoes into the parenchyma of the liver, and here it, uh, it, uh, it undergoes the ramification, and it gives off many branches which are following the segments of the liver. Different segments of the liver, I am sure when you have done the gross anatomy of the liver, you have gone through the different segmental division of the liver. So these, uh, each of these segments of the uh, liver, they have got different uh, branches which are being given off from the portal vein, from the parent portal vein. So, uh, it ultimately, it reaches into the undersurface of the liver. It reaches the hepatic sinusites, which are responsible basically for the filtration of the blood. And here, the blood it again converges uh, 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 and it uh, drains into the uh, inferior vena cava. They are by the by means of the hepatic veins. At the level of the hepatic sinusites, we have got a small very minute tiny capillaries which are being present over there yahan se sara blood jo pour in hua hai by means of the portal vein wo hepatic sinusites ke andar catch kar leta hai wahan pe minute capillaries hoti hain these minute capillaries then they unite together they increases in their diameter and they uh, ultimately fuse together to form the venules and multiple of the multiple venules they unite together to form the hepatic veins and then they ultimately uh, leave the uh, liver by draining into the inferior vena cava. So this is all about the portal vein which is a large bore vessel about uh, uh, 7 to 8 centimeters in its length and it is formed at the level of the second lumbar vertebra. It is, its formation is very important. It is formed by two very important veins. One is the uh, is splenic uh, vein and the other one is the superior mesenteric vein and uh, this confluence is actually uh, formed at the level of the second lumbar vertebra. Moving on further when we look at the tributaries of the portal vein. Now what are the tributaries of the portal vein? Portal vein is receiving I, as I have told you it is receiving almost all the blood from the uh, from the uh, viscerals of the gastrointestinal tract. So when we look uh, at the tributaries of the portal vein, uh, starting from uh, below to uh, upward, going from downward to upward, we are able to see the superior mesenteric vein, uh, which is a boxed, which is shown in a boxed, um, uh, which is actually being labeled in a boxed uh, picture. And that is the superior mesenteric vein, which is actually one of the parent vein responsible for its formation. If you trace it upward, the superior mesenteric vein is joined with, along with the splenic vein on the on the uh, left side. Okay, so this splenic vein is fusing with the superior mesenteric vein, and then ultimately it is ascending upward. During its course, it is receiving the superior pancreatic or duodenal vein uh, on the right side, while on the left side we are able to see the right gastric veins. Okay. As we are ascending upward, we are able to see another vein, which is called as, which is a small uh, twig actually, that's being labeled as the cystic vein. And on the uh, other side, we are able to see the, the uh, left gastric vein and the para umbilical veins. So these are all the tributaries of the portal vein. 
Now the the supium mesenteric vein is uh, uh, carrying or it is receiving all the blood from the region of the mid gut. Okay, since we know that the mid gut uh, is being drained uh, by the supium mesenteric vein and it receives its arterial supply from the supium mesenteric artery. So supium mesenteric vein is the vein of the mid gut. So ultimately, the whole of the blood from the mid gut it drains over there. The splenic vein is carrying the blood from the, it is receiving the, uh, the venous blood from the spleen itself and from different parts of the pancreas as well. Ascending upward, when we look at the superior pancreatic or duodenal vein, now this vein is associated with receiving the venous drainage from the region of the head of the pancreas, from the uncinate process and the second and third parts of the duodenum. So this superior pancreatic or duodenal vein is carrying that blood. Uh, and, uh, moving on further, on the other side, we are able to see the right gast gastric vein and the left gastric vein. Uh, right and left gastric veins are uh, responsible for uh, uh, having the blood from the different parts of the uh, stomach, from the greater and the lesser curvatures of the stomach. Uh, they are uh, giving the, uh, the venous blood to this right and left gastric vein. Then the paraumbilical vein. Now, paraumbilical veins are basically the veins which are draining the, the region uh, surrounding the umbilicus. So they are called as the paraumbilical veins, and they, and they are present sort of in a, uh, in a radiating manner. They are the umbilical uh, hole is present in the center, and the veins are present in, in a radiating manner, uh, uh, starting uh, from the uh, to, from this uh, umbilical opening and then going towards the periphery in a radiating manner. So they are being labeled as the paraumbilical vein and it ultimately drains into the uh, portal vein. Then a small twig is being labeled that's called as the cystic vein. It is uh, getting the blood from the gallbladder itself. The, the whole of the gallbladder, it gives off the venous drainage to the cystic vein. So in this way, these uh, all are the tributaries of the, uh, they are the portal veins uh, tributaries, which are draining the blood from different parts of the, um, of the intestine as well as the uh, stomach and uh, uh, the gallbladder. And uh, in this way, the blood is being poured in into the portal vein and ultimately it reaches into the liver. Now, when we look at the, uh, the, the two parent veins which are responsible for the formation of the, uh, for the formation of this portal vein, that's the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein. So we are going to first have a look at the splenic vein. Now splenic vein is one of the uh, two larger tributaries of the portal vein and that is formed by the uh, combination of the segmental veins. Segmental veins are similar uh, to the segmental veins of the liver. The spleen is also divided into certain anatomical segments and the blood is being given off from these segments into the splenic vein, parent to splenic vein. So uh, the, this splenic vein is basically formed from different the small branches which are coming, coming from the different segments. Now this splenic vein once it confluences with the superior mesenteric vein, it forms the uh, portal vein and uh, it's, a, it's a large uh, vein which has got a diameter of about one centimeter and um, initially the diameter is as small as it leaves from the spleen, the diameter of this vein is as small but as it runs towards the parent, within the parenchyma of the, uh, of the pancreas, its diameter is gradually increased. So when it reaches towards its termination, just in the portal vein, as soon as it is start forming the portal vein, it gains its uh, diameter to about one centimeter. It becomes a large gold vessel. Um, now, uh, the tributaries of the splenic vein are the, the short uh, gastric veins, there is left uh, gastroepithroid vein, there is uh, inferior mesenteric vein which is draining over here, and the pancreatic veins, they also uh, give the blood into the splenic vein. 
Now about the short gastric veins, the short gastric veins are receiving, again, they are receiving the venous drainage from different parts of the stomach. They are very small, tiny branches, which are getting the venous blood from different parts of the stomach. The gastroepiploid veins are uh, associated with the epiploid formin and uh, uh, the mesentery. Uh, which is actually covering the um, the stomach and uh, uh, the inferior mesenteric vein is responsible for giving uh, for having all the venous drainage from the region of the hind gut okay hind gut means jo sara blood hota hai the venous blood all of it is being poured into the inferior mesenteric vein and then there is a vein there are veins which are coming from the pancreas itself since it is the splenic vein itself is um, uh, traversing the parenchyma of the pancreas so the sara pancreas se jo venous blood hota there are small pancreatic veins which are draining the different parts of the pancreas they ultimately enters into the uh, into the splenic vein jaise jaise uh, splenic vein pancreas ko cross karti jati hai side by side jo branches hoti hai pancreatic veins jo hoti hai वो अल्टीमेटली एंटर होती जाती हैं एंड इनटू द स्पीनिंग वेन एंड दे पोर इन द वेनस ब्लड सो इन दिस वे दिस इज दीज आर द द ट्रिब्यूटरीज ऑफ द स्पीनिंग वेन द शॉर्ट गैस्ट्रिक वेन लेफ्ट गैस्ट्रो एपिक्लोइक वेन द इनफीरियर मीजेंटेनिक वेन एंड देयर आर मल्टीपल पेंट्रियाटिक वेन्स व्हिच आर ड्रेनिंग द ब्लड इनटू द स्पीनिंग वेन the spleenic vein as it reaches towards the posterior aspect of the neck of the pancreas it fuses with the superior mesenteric vein now we are going to have a look at the superior mesenteric vein that what um, uh, uh, are the tributaries of its uh, um, of this vein and how it is being formed now this is the largest tributary of the portal vein and uh, this specific vein is responsible for draining the small intestine for draining the cecum and the ascending and the transverse parts of the colon about proximal two third of the of the transverse colon is being drained into the superior mesenteric vein so whole of the small intestine then cecum ascending colon and the proximal two third parts of the transverse colon they are being developed uh, they are being uh, um, uh, drained into the uh, superior mesenteric vein and ultimately the uh, uh, this, this venous blood is being uh, poured in, into the portal circulation and uh, uh, this uh, vein it is uh, which is a large bone vessel is called the diameter hota hai hota hai that is about uh, uh, 3.5 to 3 cm in its uh, thickness and it passes behind the head of the pancreas and the horizontal part of the duodenum so over there it um, uh, it ascends uh, further and it turns towards a uh, left side to get fused with the splenic vein splenic vein aapke isko join kar deti hai and ultimately they are uh, responsible for both of these veins are responsible for the formation of the uh, portal vein now when we look at the tributaries of the uh, the superior mesenteric vein uh, there are uh, uh, the veins which are draining the duodenum uh, jejunum and ileum the which are the parts of uh, the uh, of the small intestine so the uh, duodenum is uh, getting its blood supply partly from the superior pancreatic or duodenal vein that we have discussed previously and partly from the inferior pancreatic or duodenal vein so this inferior pancreatic or duodenal vein uh, it is giving the blood supply to it is uh, uh, receiving the venous drainage from both the pancreas as well as from the different parts of the duodenum then there are jejunal and ileal veins specifically which are being they are multiple in number and they are being given off to the jejunum and ileum of the small intestine now these veins they are uh, being uh, entered into the superior mesenteric vein then we have got uh, the uh, vein which is uh, basically um, uh, responsible for the drainage of the cecum and the ileocecal junction so that vein is called as the ileocolic vein now this ileocolic vein is uh, uh, getting the blood from the distal most part of the ileum and from the cecum and the junction which is present between both of them 
so then that is called as the IU folic vein. Then we have got another vein which is being labeled over here as the right folic vein. Now this right folic vein is basically the vein which is responsible for draining the ascending colon. Okay. इसी तरीके से इंटीरियर मिसेंटेरिक की वेन होती है दैट्स द लेफ्ट कोलिक वेन व्हिच इज जस्ट ड्रेनिंग द ब्लड फ्रॉम द डिसेंडिंग कोलोन सिंस द सेंडिंग कोलोन इज लोकेटेड ऑन द राइट साइड ऑफ द ह्यूमन बॉडी सो द वेन व्हिच इज ड्रेनिंग ओवर देयर इज कॉल्ड एज द राइट कोलिक वेन ठीक है सो देयर इज राइट कोलिक वेन व्हिच इज ड्रेनिंग द ब्लड फ्रॉम द डिसेंडिंग कोलोन देन वी हैव गॉट अनदर वेन व्हिच इज लेबल्ड एज द मिडिल कोलिक वेन एंड दैट ब्लड इज गेटिंग द Uh, blood from the uh, from the proximal two third segments of the transverse colon. So in this way, uh, you have seen that the that all parts of the small intestine, the uh, many of the parts of the large intestine, and uh, uh, they are uh, the the pancreas as well. They are ultimately being drained into the uh, superior mesenteric vein. So we have a mesenteric vein. Then it passes behind the head of the pancreas. It turns a little left. It is being joined by the splenic vein, and there is formation of the portal vein. And that portal vein it ultimately enters into the liver. So is it clear to all of you till now? Okay. Thank you. Thanks to all the students. Thank you so very much. Now moving on further, we are going to have a look at the photosystolic anastomosis, and that anastomosis is very, very, uh, or you can say, extremely important when you do the clinical uh, rotations and uh, from clinical uh, standpoint. Now this is the site where the photos circulation uh, it. Merges with the systemic circulation. There are certain organs of in the in the human body, and even the abdominal wall uh, is also at at some of the points. Um, uh, this abdominal wall and certain organs of the human body, they are basically responsible for having the the blood supply, this uh, venous drainage, both from the veins which are draining into the portal vein. as well as into the systemic veins and at these sites this anastomosis is being formed now why this anastomosis is clinically important because if any of the condition that happens to the liver because we know that all the ultimately all of the blood from the portal circulation it reaches into the uh, into the uh, liver and you have seen that uh, the the tributaries of the portal vein which are basically responsible for its formation that is the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein ye uh, uh, they are getting the blood from almost all parts of the gi tract so we need to save this uh, this circulation in case of any pathology that uh, happens in the liver because agar uh, liver ko kuch ho gaya if something happens in the liver if any pathology takes place in the liver and if the portal circulation is choked ultimately we need we know that the, the portal vein it undergoes into ramification or wo uh, bahut small branches get it so if the parenchyma of the liver is damaged we know that ultimately the portal vein is also being damaged or portal vein ke damage hone ka matlab hai that the whole of the uh, gi tract would suffer so the nature has provided a substitute and alternate way in the form of the systemic circulation so that uh, the the main points uh, or there are certain viscera which get spared from this uh, 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 catastrophic effect ya jo bhi damage ho raha hai because of any pathology usse wo prevent uh, uh, preventive measures uh, as such ho raha hai Now, uh, what are the sites where this photosystemic anastomosis it actually takes place? Uh, number one, we are able to see that uh, um, site of the photosystemic anastomosis at the cardiac end of the stomach. Okay. Now, cardiac end of the stomach, pe, there is a vein uh, that's a left gastric vein. Uh, and uh, this left gastric vein is basically uh, it gives its blood to the azygous vein as well 
and uh, the veins uh, they are short and uh, uh, gastric vein and the right gastric vein and some tributaries of the left gastric vein itself they drain into the portal vein as well so the circulation is given off to the portal vein as well as to the systemic vein by means of the azygous vein uh then we have got a second set of circulation which is being developed at the level of uh, the rectum and i am remember ki jab maine aapko rectum bataya tha to maine aapko photosystemic circulation us waqt batayi thi that there is a superior rectal vein which drains into the portal vein and there are middle and inferior rectal veins which drains into the um, systemic vein or the uh, cable circulation so at the at the lower part of the rectum we have got a very good site of the photosystemic anastomosis which is being uh, uh, formed by the superior middle and inferior rectal vein draining into the portal vein and the cable circulation respectively then we have got uh, a third site which is present at the level of the umbilicus jaise maine aapko bataya tha ki para umbilical veins hoti hain and these para umbilical veins they are Uh, some of the veins they are draining into the portal circulation and some of the veins they drain into the uh, into the systemic circulation uh, by the systemic circulation they enter through the inferior epigastric vein they enter into the cable circulation so the 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 you know uh, the uh, this um, uh, umbilicus is a site of the photosystemic anastomosis with its veins draining into both the cable circulation as well as to the portal circulation cable circulation may they got entered through the inferior epigastric veins then we have got um, another uh, site which is present at the uh, level of the kidneys and uh, that is um, uh, the there is a connection between the portal system and the left renal vein so the a uh, left renal vein it uh, uh, it has got uh, a drainage site into the portal into portal circulation while there are certain veins from the from the kidney itself which are uh, the retroperitoneal veins ki jinko kaha jata hai and they are being uh, taken up by the cable circulation so kidney is again a site of the uh, of the um, of the photosystemic anastomosis with its uh, veins draining both into the cable circulation as well as into the uh, portal circulation there is a fifth uh, site where the um, the abdominal organs they come in contact with the retroperitoneal tissues and there are uh, retroperitoneal veins or paravertebral veins now these uh, retroperitoneal paravertebral veins they have got their connection with both the uh, the portal circulation as well as the, with the systemic circulation if you look at number 5 aapko nazar aa raha hai retroperitoneal paravertebral veins to yahan pe there is a good site of anastomosis which is being shown over here with some of the vein draining into the into the cava that's the inferior vena cava and some of the veins they are draining into the portal vein so these retroperitoneal tissues they are also a good site of the photosystemic anastomosis so in this way we have got at least five distinct sites where this photosystemic anastomosis it takes place in the in the abdominal cavity number 1 is the cardio of the stomach number 2 is the rectum uh, of the large intestine that number 3 we have got kidneys number 4 there is um, uh, the uh, the uh, there is a site of uh, the uh, you know jahan pe retroperitoneal tissues bhi aake mil rahe hote hain and uh, they fuses with the paravertebral vein so at all these sites specifically uh, there is uh, a a very prominent uh, photosystemic anastomosis being formed and there are para umbilical veins uh, definitely so these five sites are the potential sites where the anastomosis takes place if any pathology it happens in the liver this anastomosis is responsible for protecting the the uh, damaging effects to distinct parts of the intestine now again this picture is showing the photosystemic anastomosis with different sites uh, uh, and uh, that is just a revision of what we have done 
uh, now I want uh, to end up the session uh, uh, because we are short of time now. This session will, will uh, this presentation will be uploaded on Admodo, and um, uh, this is probably my last class with you guys in your first year. So I want all of you to um, have a good uh, command over the subject. I'm always welcome to uh, help you guys. Other koi kisi in any aspect of the anatomy, if you have got any of the problem, you can always come to me. Uh, so all the very I'm wishing you all the very best of luck for your upcoming exams, both the pre-prof as well as uh, your professional exams. Okay, thank you so very much. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Padma.